Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about fetal genitalia ultrasound. This is the seventh video in this video series with title of Fetal Transient Clitromegaly. The outline of this presentation include introduction, isolated transient clitromegaly, non-isolated transient clitromegaly, transient hypertrophy of the labia minora, and final teaching points. At first, introduction. Some sonographic findings may lead to an inaccurate diagnosis of fetal external genitalia in early and mid-pregnancy. Transient clitromegaly and transient hypertrophy of the labia minora are two sonographic findings causing inaccurate fetal sex determination. Fetal clitromegaly is usually caused by maternal and fetal hormonal disturbances or treatment as well as fetal intersex states. The phenomenon of transient fetal clitromegaly has not yet been documented at 14 to 16 weeks gestation. There are no gross charts of clitoral size in early and mid-pregnancy. The only charts available are on neonates, and one of them starting at 13 weeks gestation. The definition of clitromegaly is usually dependent to observer experience. Isolated transient clitromegaly the definition of clitromegaly is an upward thickened and enlarged clitoris. We can see clitromegaly at 15 and 16 weeks gestation in this fetus. In a sagittal plane, the clitoris is thick and in an upward direction. An unclosed genital swelling may be noted in all of these cases. These findings may suggest a diagnosis of hypospadias. This coronal plane from the same fetus at 15 weeks shows male genitalia with hypospadias. Despite these findings, fetal chromosomal analysis reveals an XX karyotype, hence a diagnosis of clitromegaly should be considered. Maternal hormonal studies is needed to exclude the possibility of other genital syndrome. We must ask about history of hormonal treatment, the fetal adrenal size should be assessed, follow-up scans is necessary, usually at 22 to 26 weeks gestation, normal appearing female external genitalia will be revealed. This image from the same fetus at 22 weeks gestation, which is a coronal plane, shows normal appearing female external genitalia with a normal clitoris. All these fetuses have normal genitalia after delivery. Non-isolated transient clitromegaly. These fetuses usually show clitromegaly and the fetus may have a dilated transport large bowel at 15 weeks gestation. A diagnosis of mal rotation and hypospadias may be suggested. A chromosomal analysis reveals an XX karyotype, the fetal adrenal size should be assessed and the clitromegaly usually disappear at follow-up. The female neonate will be filmed at birth and a cloacal anomaly may be filmed. The clitoris of the neonate will be normal. The association between a cloacal anomaly and clitromegaly is well known and has been reported in many articles. According to many articles, it seems therefore the anomalies of the external genitalia may appear in many cases of a cloacal anomaly. Transient hypertrophy of the labia minora Hypertrophy of the labia minora is defined as protuberant labial tissue that extends beyond the labia majora. The enlargement can be unilateral or bilateral. The phenomenon has been described in girls and women. In most cases, the etiologic factors are known. Possible underlying reasons are infection, androgenic medication, masturbation, and early sexual activity. Surgical correction may be offered in cases of aesthetic concern, physical discomfort, or dyspronia. 
on a parasitical plane of ultrasound exam, the fetuses seem to have an upward thickened and elongated clitoris. As we can see in this ultrasound image, in a parasitical plane at 22 weeks, we can see upwardly directed clitromegaly. However, with imaging the genitalia in a coronal plane, two thick and elongated labia minora can be found. This coronal and more apical plane from the same fetus at 22 weeks shows two thick and adjacent labia minora which extend beyond the labia majora. Another image from the same fetus at coronal plane shows that the two labia are separated. A chromosomal analysis reveals a normal XX karyotype. The fetal adrenal size should be assessed. The hypertrophy of the labia minora resolves gradually and disappear at 26 to 32 weeks. This image from the same fetus at 26 weeks gestation shows normal appearing labia and at 32 weeks we can see normal appearing female external genitalia with triple line appearance. The fetuses will have normal appearing genitalia at delivery. Here is a very important point. Most of the cases of transient clitromegaly and transient labial hypertrophy have no increased risk of fetal anomalies. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Clitromegaly and enlarged labia minora may appear in early and mid-pregnancy, which are two sonographic findings causing inaccurate fetal sex determination. The definition of clitromegaly is highly dependent to observer experience. Fetal karyotyping and maternal hormonal studies should be performed. All of the cases of clitromegaly and an enlarged labia minora have a normal XX karyotype. In a case of normal liberty results in an XX fetus, follow-up scans in different planes, especially the coronal plane, should be performed because some of these changes in the female genitalia are transient and benign. Anomalies of external genitalia may appear in many cases of a cloacal anomaly. Most of the cases of transient clitromegaly and transient labial hypertrophy have no increased risk of fetal anomalies. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.